Uh, and we'll come back and let's uh, hope that the second start is going to be better than the first. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pasha begins with the uh, very uh, interesting passage about a captive that has been brought to uh, home for war and the procedure the soldier has to go through if he wishes to marry her. I won't go into the details uh, of, of uh, what's called the case of the Eshut Yefat Toa. But part of the procedure before he's allowed to marry her is that there has to be a cooling down, a cooling off period of 30 days of a mother. Um, so of a month, during which time she, she laments, cries for a father and a mother. Um, and only after that, then this soldier can marry the captive. Obviously, he has found this woman, has been overcome by um, her beauty, um, by, uh, and he wants to make her his wife. Um, but it can't happen immediately. He's going to have to um, wait that month. So before we kind of look a bit deeper at this, I want to point out to the following. The word used for a month is Yerach. Yerach, you can see it here, Yud, Resh, and Chet, is a very unusual um, word. Normally, the Torah uses the word Chodesh to express that time span of a month. What, what is this term Yerach? And what's the significance of the use of that word? Um, Yerach is a literally moon. Uh, Yerach is a span of time. Um, the term that is normally used in our Torah for a month is Chodesh. Now, what's the difference? Yerach simply means 28 days, 29 days, 30 days. Well, it's February here. It's not a Jewish month, so it has 29 days. Um, and, and the word Yerach is from the moon, the, the celestial body called moon. Um, and it just simply sim signifies the passage of time. The word Chodesh goes far deeper because it's, of course, uh, the picture is of the moon, but the word Chodesh is from the word Chadash, which means something new, renewal, freshness. And when you refer to something as a Yerach or as Chodesh, um, it, it takes on a totally different dimension. Um, so to illustrate this, I'll show you a Ketubah. And on the Ketubah, there's a date. Um, and how is the date recorded? So by zooming in, uh, you can see we lost a bit of quality in the zooming in, but you mentioned a day of the week and a day of the month, and you use the word Chodesh. And of course, the Ketubah, we know, is the, is the marriage document. And Baruch Hashem, I think most of us on the Zoom um, have a marriage document, the Ketubah, um, and that um, uses the term that is normally used in the Torah um, for month, Chodesh. Um, hopefully, few of you have seen this particular document. This is a get. It ends a marriage. Uh, it also has to be dated. Um, but this one, if we zoom in, um, and it says here, um, the day chained with Shabbat, Shnei Yamim Le Yerach Sivan. Um, so that's two days into the month of Sivan. But here, the word Yerach is used. So strangely, for a marriage, we talk about Chodesh. For a divorce, we mentioned we used the term Yerach um, for uh, explaining what uh, for, 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 for clarifying uh, the date. How do we explain that? What, what is that about? Um, so let, let's understand a bit better um, what, what, what this, what this uh, difference in the dating is. Um, and, and perhaps that will also explain why in the case of 
this marriage to the, 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 the this captive, uh, it uses the word Yerach. So let, let, let's just go into this a bit, a bit deeper. And let's get rid of the get from our screen. Um, if I can do this. Um, why is it that in a get, it uses the word Yerach? So there's an allusion to it. It's in the blessings of uh, Moshe Rabbein, Vizot Abracha. And it mentions there the, the yield of, of the moon, the bounteous crop of the moon, with the following words. In Meged Geresh Yerachim. Now, um, Geresh is related to the word Gerushin for divorce. So Geresh uh, and Yerach somehow seem to be linked. Um, that's, that's the illusion that is brought down in our commentaries to explain why the term Yerach um, is used in the get. Evan, it comes to a, a marriage. This is from this week's parasha as well. It talks about marriage with the words Ki kach ish isha chadasha. A man takes a woman into his household, that is wife, and it, it talks about chadasha, a new wife. So um, for that reason, we use the term chodesh to explain to term uh, and, and to date. Uh, get, of course, this deals with the law that uh, first year of marriage, something which is called shana rishona. Uh, there is this obligation of, of remaining home, of not traveling uh, and, and, and being there um, for, uh, you know, as a couple together. Because it uses the words isha, chadasha, a, a new wife, so we said we're going to use the word Chodesh. So those are kind of sweet little illusions, uh, but surely it, it has to go uh, deeper than that. Surely, um, you know, we, we've got to be able to go a little bit of a deeper understanding. Once again, this anomaly that in the get, when he's using the word Yareach, Yerach, and in a Ketubba, for a marriage, we use the term um, Chodesh. Um, so as I said, chod, Yerach just signifies a, a passage of time. Uh, it's just a time unit. Chodesh has that dimension of renewal. Yerach implies same old, same old, no freshness. Nothing exciting. Um, chodesh, from the word chadash, the moon renews itself. Every month we go out uh, and have a little bracha for the moon, um, where we thank Hashem for the renewal of the moon. Um, and we say there um, that we ask that we should be renewed just as the moon renews itself. It's a very powerful wish that's being expressed in this bracha, uh, that uh, we as a people ask for renewal, Redemption, just as the moon renews itself, it waxes um, and wanes. And that creates freshness. That creates excitement. That creates continuity. Continuity cannot be with same old, same old, with just a repetition of the same activities, outlooks, values, um, interactions that creates boredom, um, and boredom is unfortunately a recipe for lack of continuity. Um, and, and in a marriage, this is obviously a, a very important marriage is where it's the same day in, day in, day out, day in, day out, cause boredom in the relationship. Um, and uh, as a result, it, 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 it leads to that document where the date is recorded as Yerach, um, as opposed to a marriage where there is freshness, renewal, um, where there is a new excitement, an ongoing basis, uh, is the marriage where that Chodesh that was recorded in the Ketubah is going to be there continually. And so those two words, um, relate to two um, very different approaches to how relationships should happen, and, and consequently, um, how lasting and enduring that relationship is actually going 
to be. So, um, quoting from the Talmud in, in Nida, that actually makes reference to the laws of um, family purity, the laws of Nida. Um, the Talmud asks the question, um, Ramea says, why is it that there's a prohibition of relations between a husband and a wife during that um, week of Nida, seven days? Um, and the Talmud answers, because if this was a, an activity which became routine, uh, they become accustomed to each other, and eventually there's a, a mutual repulsion. The Torah says, no, there's a ritual impurity during which time there is a separation in the physical sense, um, and then when the woman is pure again, um, there's a, a dearness, there's that absence that has made uh, the, the heart grow fonder, uh, and returning after a woman goes to the mikvah to her husband is like a new chuppah, uh, once again. So the, the Gemara acknowledges, uh, this is you know, thousands of years ago, uh, the danger, the pitfall of, of boredom in, in the relationship. And of course, this is talking specifically about the, the physical relationship, but it's, it's, it's in the emotional relationship. It's in every aspect of marriage. If we simply have a repetition um, of that, which has been going on, it doesn't have a future. And that's Yerach, that's just measuring time. Um, and that is um, you know, a, a difficult challenge for a marriage to uh, surmount. Interestingly, there is one other place in the Torah where that unit of time is also referred to as Yerach. Uh, as I said, it's always Chodesh, um, except in this passage here. Um, and that is when uh, Moshe is placed in the basket, in the basket and placed. Um, I did not bring the text in, sorry. Um, but it says that uh, his mother took um, Zipporah, took the baby, but titzpeneu shlosha yerachim. She hid him for three moons, for three months. Uh, that's the only other time in the entire Torah where that span of time, uh, the month, is referred to as a moon. Um, what is, what is uh, the idea there? Disengagement. Um, for uh, poor Yochevet, um, as far as she was concerned, she could not bond with her child because she was going to lose him. Uh, there was you know, Miriam who had great faith and knew uh, that this was going to lead somewhere. As far as Yochevet was concerned, um, she was going to lose that child and she could not bond with them and she was disengaging from the very beginning because she, it was only a matter of time before the Egyptian soldiers were going to come knocking on the door and take her away and take him away rather um, so the hiding of the baby in her home was shlosha yerachim, three months but there were months not of engagement but of disengagement when we talk about the um, man who has um, chosen a captive brought her home from war into his home and wants to marry her. Um, that is a marriage that is not based on the foundations of what a Jewish marriage should be. Um, it is based on shallow, uh, external superficialities of, of, of love, um, of, uh, as she's called, Eshet Yefat Torah, a woman of a beautiful appearance. And he's chosen her uh, because of, of her appearance, but not because of the inner qualities that she may uh, possess. And that, that's not the recipe for a lasting marriage. And the Torah, by saying she's going to have to wait, a Yerach is hinting to that process of, of disengagement that is really happening. This marriage, the Torah says, if it's going to go forth, is doomed to be a disengaged marriage rather than one of connection. So we, we find, as I said, the word chodesh and the word yerach with very different connotations of bonding versus disengaging. Now, let me take this to something topical and practical by quoting the Zohar um, on that very, very first uh, passage uh, there in uh, our parasha. This is what the Zohar says. Hoping that technology doesn't fail me again. Here we are. Um, the Zohar's words are, 
Bachta et Aviv et Imagerach Yamim. She cries for her father and mother for um, a month of days, a moon of days. Dahi Yarcha de Elu. That, says the, uh, uh, the Zohar, the Aramaic, is the month of Elu. Huh? Yerach, Aramaic. You can speak Aramaic, but just take Hebrew with an adding an aleph. That's the basic rule. Kidding. Uh, so Yarcha is the uh, month, the Elu of Elu. So the Zohar links somehow that, that month of crying that's in the beginning of the parasha with the month of Edom, and of course we, we also reflect that we cry over our actions. Um, the period that we're in now is actually um, a renewal of our vows with Hashem. We are engaged as a people in the marriage with the Almighty. The month of Elul, we are told, is the courtship. We court each other, it's a dating period. Rosh Hashanah is the betrothal. If you ever listen to a rabbi explain the marriage ceremony, so he will say marriage is always done in two halves, two parts. There is the betrothal, uh, and then there is the actual nisuin, which is the proper marriage. Uh, the betrothal happens on Rosh Hashanah. The marriage happens on Yom Kippur. The celebrations, the wedding feast, that's Sukkot, and the uh, intimate part of marriage, the consummation, uh, that's Shmini Atzeret, Simchat Torah, uh, when the joy reaches its, its, its highest levels. Um, let's go back to the current month, month of Elul. It's a month of courtship. What is courtship about? And how is courtship different than many um, unhealthy marriages? Uh, when a man and a woman are courting each other, there is freshness, Every single day, every single aspect of in that relationship will ride through uh, the courtship. It's a matter of you know thinking of new ways, new places to date, uh, new clothes to wear to appear, um, you know, fresh and, and, and different. New gifts to give one another, um, new greetings, new. You know, you're courting. You want to attract the other person's attention. You want to capture them. And, and you want to bond and cement that relationship, you want to um, be able to go to that uh, betrothal engagement marriage, uh, you've got to have that freshness in it. And that is going to be the introduction to Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. That's that month of Elul. We court Hashem once again. We think every day of what different can we do in our relationship with Hashem. Let's make sure that as we go into the year ahead, it's not just a, a carbon copy of, of what had happened before. We want to go into our marriage and, and assure that our marriage uh, with Hashem is going to be a lasting one. It's going to be one of engagement, not one of disengagement, one of connection and bonding, where boredom doesn't set in. Um, and that is, it goes both ways. It, it's mutual. How do we ensure that? By making sure that our relationship is Chodesh. And so this Chodesh, this month of Elul, what do we read about in the parasha? If it's a Yerach relationship that we have with Hashem, then we cry. We cry at the fact that so much of what has gone on the past 10, 11 months has been one of routine. I'm getting up in the morning, same blessings, same shema, same tefillin, same prayer, same Shabbos candles, same kosher, uh, where we've, we've kind of continued to go through the motions of the rules of engagement with Hashem, um, but without any freshness, without any excitement, without any newness to it. Um, and that leads, of course, to, to disengagement, to disconnect. Um, and we all know um, that, that that amazing bond, that pledge, that high that we experience at the end of Yom Kippur and then Sukkot that follows, it's very difficult to sustain that. And why is that? Because they have that pitfall of the yerach, of the, the, the boredom of the repetitiveness in, in that relationship, as can happen in, in a physical marriage, uh, a literal marriage between a husband and, and a wife. And so that month of Elul is that of, of, of courtship, of, of freshness, of chodesh. And I want to end uh, with a final slide, um, which is about Rosh Hashanah. But listen to the way in Tehillim, King David describes um, the mitzvah of blowing shofar. 
תיקו בחודש שופר. blow חודש, in the חודש, on ראש חודש, the שופר. But which ראש חודש is you talking about? There's only one ראש חודש that actually is יונטף. Uh, all other Yomitavim happen mid-month, uh, happen later in the month. Uh, the only Rosh Chodesh that's actually a Yontav is um, Rosh Hashanah. So blow on Rosh Chodesh, on the covered time for your holiday, blow the Shefer. Um, and it refers to Rosh Hashanah with the word Chodesh. Now, I mean, the fact that Rosh, Rosh Hashanah happens to be Rosh Chodesh kind of seems to you know, fall by, by the wayside. We seem, seem to forget about it. But in, in Tehidim here, um, that word Chodesh is emphasized because that's what we want to do when we blow the Shofar. We want to bring out that dimension of newness and freshness um, that is the marriage that we engage, engage in with Hashem. If grammatically, um, and you can see it even in the Hebrew, I mean, blow on Rosh Chodesh or Shofar. It should be the other way. It should be blow the Shofar on Rosh Chodesh. That's how it normally speaks. In Hebrew, it should have been Tiku Shofar Bachodesh. Um, but that word Chodesh is emphasized by being brought forward in the sentence uh, to symbolize that what we're actually blowing uh, is not the Shofar, just an agent. What we're actually blowing in is that freshness, uh, that newness. We want to make sure um, that that marriage that we've now engaged in Hashem. And has been one of Chodesh and not one of Yerach, one which is going to re- result in the Ketubah that will remain together and not, God forbid, that other document um, that uh, is dated uh, with that word uh, Yerach. So let's make sure that we, uh, we take full advantage of this uh, courtship uh, period uh, that we're going through now um, and that um, and that uh, if we, if we engage in all the right activities in month of Elul, and then the marriage that we're going to celebrate uh, in, in a couple of weeks uh, is going to be one that is going to be a lasting one, one of engagement, of mutual relationship with Hashem, and not chas uh, that which is uh, I mean, if to sit and cry because it's a Yerach. Uh, so uh, happy Elul um, and... Uh, Best of luck.